Instead, let's talk about your encephalitis. Okay, again, when you see those effects, itis, I know that you're immediately thinking about inflammation. And that's also true when it comes to your encephalitis, kapatid, because encephalitis is the inflammation of the brain parenchyma and the meninges. Okay, so this is not the inflammation mainly of your meninges because that's more of the meningitis, but this is the inflammation of the general or it affects the entirety of your central nervous system. So it, it affects the cerebrum, the brainstem, and also the cerebellum. So we need to remember this one. Again, it's the inflammation of your brain parenchyma and the meninges. And let's talk about the causes kung bakit nga ba nagkakaroon ng inflammation na ito. First, because of viral infection. And you need to write this down because your viral infection, so far as your encephalitis is concerned, is the most often cause of it. So again, you need to remember that your viral infection is the most common cause of your encephalitis. Okay? And you need also to think that bacterial infection may also be one of the causes but it's not the cause itself. Okay? Bacterial causes, bacterial infection may also be there. Fungal infection may also be the cause. Parasitic infection may also be the cause. But again, going back to what's the most often cause, kapatid, is still your viral infection. Okay? And most especially your herpes or your herbs, mostly, kapatid, yun ang nagiging cause po ng ating encephalitis. Okay? The herpes type of your um, viral infection. Okay? So it's what we call as, actually as your herpes or herbs. Um, encephalitis. Now, so what are the possible assessment na makikita natin dito, kapatid? Okay, first, let's talk about your, it affects your central, your central nervous system. So it's expected that there would be an altered level of consciousness. So kapatid, you write, it that you write this down because it's mainly the uh, ones that being, that's being affected. Altered level of consciousness, kasama, dyan, kasama na dyan ang ating motor functions. Okay, so those are uh, the most important thing that we should be thinking about. Okay, also cold sores, lesions is also there, kapatid, and ulcerations in the oral cavity. Why? Because it's itis, itis, itis. There is an inflammation of it, kapatid, so we need to remember this now. Okay, so also there's a history, there's a history of insect bites and swimming in fresh water. So mostly, yung mga tao po na nagkakaroon ng encephalitis, there are those people na nagkaroon kapatid ng history of insect bites and also swimming in fresh water. So, you need to write that down. Expe uh, exposure to infectious diseases is also uh, possible, kapatid. So, that's it. And also travel to areas where the disease is prevalent. That's why you need to check the history, the travel history of the patient. When was the last time na pumunta ang isang tao sa isang lugar na kung saan mataas po ang kaso no ng encephalitis. So you need to think about that one. Also kapatid, pwede ding pumasok sa ating mga assessment kapatid ng general fever, nausea and vomiting. Magkakapatid po ang mga assessments na yan. And these two important things, two to three important things you need to think about this one. First is your Koenig sign. Kapatid kapag sinabi natin Koenig sign, okay, this is there is a resistance or pain during the extension of the patient's knees. Kapag in-extend po ang patient's knees, okay, there is a pain or resistance. Okay, so we need to remember this one. Another thing also is yung tinatawag po nating Brodzinski sign. Okay, so your Brodzinski sign is uh, when there is pain, when flexing the individual's neck or or dito yung head no while lying flat on their back so nagkakaroon po ng pain meron din pong resistance dito kapatid okay so we need to remember this one there's also nuchal rigidity and also signs of increased intracranial pressure okay so you write this down all of these things kapatid these are the assessments na makikita po natin in your encephalitis okay so we need to remember that your pathognomonic signs here are your kernigs your Brudzinski sign, your nuchal rigidity, and also, you think about the insect bites. When was the last time na nagpunta ng isang tao sa kung saan meron pong cases of encephalitis? Okay, especially of those that are a viral type. So now, kapatid, that we know the assessment, 
let's try to know what are the interventions. Ano ngayon ang gagawin natin for these patients? Number one, you monitor vital signs. Of course, this is very essential. And in monitoring vital signs, kapatid, you also assess for the level of consciousness using your Glasgow Coma Scale. Yan, so we need to remember this one. Universally, ito po yung ginagamit natin GCS. And monitoring vital signs, you also need, kapatid, to monitor the mental status or the neuro, uh, neuromuscular status of the patient. So assess for signs of ICP or the intracranial pressure, kapatid. Assist the client to turn cough and have a deep breath frequently so ayan and also we need to elevate the head of bed for 30 to 45 degrees okay why to avoid yan increased intracranial pressure so that's why we elevate the head kapatid okay of 30 to 45 degrees also assess for muscle and neuro neurological deficits so you also need to write this down and of course we give medication kapatid that's why we give medication and we give here a cyclover because we we always suspect or the most common or most often cause of your encephalitis is a viral type. No, it's the herpes type, kapatid. So you you write down a cyclover po ang binibigay po natin sa ating pasyente. It's an it's an antiretroviral medication, kapatid, and this is the one that we are using in case of your encephalitis. So. You read that down, kapatid. Okay? So, initiate also rehabilitation as needed for motor dysfunction and also for deficits. Okay? So, that's it. Thank you, Caps. Maraming salamat for being with me sa ating discussion in the case of your encephalitis. And more and more videos are coming. Maraming salamat po.